Today we're demoing a script which takes some very bad quality architectural information, information that doesn't connect, that's got bits missing, it's made out of wonky lines, different level lines, etc. and turning it into good quality structural models and structural drawings, all with a script. So you can see here a structural connected model. And then we can auto design our timber. And then finally we can bring it into a drafting package and create drawings. So here we've got some geometry directly from an architect. In this case, it's from an architectural program called Archicad. And it's been done completely from an architecture perspective. So as a structure engineer, normally I would say I can't really use this model. And I'll explain why in a minute. Because what I need to create out of this is a structural model and I need to do my structural drafting. Normally I would need to redraw all of this as a structural model and I would need to get a structural drafts person to draft it into structural drawings. But actually these days you can do it a lot quicker and I'm actually going to show you how to do it in a couple of minutes with this script that we've got here. So I'll quickly go over why normally I wouldn't be able to use this model as a structural engineer. Firstly, you can see these members are made out of different objects. So I've got some lines, we've got some solids. Some of the solids have ends to them, some of them don't. So there's all sorts of random stuff in there. The columns stop before the floor heights so they're not connected for a structural model you need it connected at nodes this column doesn't even connect to the floor at all or any of the beams this column is made out of a funny cutout shape so it's not clear where the center line of the column even is you can see these beams aren't straight you can see that with these lines here I've got skewed lines all over the place and also you've got funny little cutouts you've got doorways this mesh isn't even flat you've got these little cutouts in walls you've got composite objects like that so quite a bit quite a number of problems. So I'm now going to take this pretty messy architectural geometry and see how this script can turn it into some structural information. Okay so it's done. So the structural model is in red. It overlaps with most things but you'll notice that it's rationalized the levels so I've only got base level 1 and roof now. You can adjust that to have the sub levels as well but usually from a structural point of view to have that one level 1 as a floor as one plate makes sense. So if I turn off the architectural geometry you can see just the structural part that the scripts created and you'll notice that everything's flat and everything's straight so there's no wonky members anymore it also deletes any double members along edges so architects might have window frames edge beams secondary sections at the top of door heads it's got rid of all that all the beams are split 
at primary and secondary locations. Sometimes the architect will draw it all as one member. Everything's connected. So walls always meet a floor at their top. Columns always hit a beam at their top. So that node is 100% connected. As with all columns in this output, all column heads are 100% connected to beams. And this is a fully connected model. So to prove it, I'm going to plug this into a structural plugin in Grasshopper. But equally, you could put this output into eTabs or SpaceGas. And we'll be doing that later. But this will show you that this model is fully formed and structural. And later, we'll put it into a structural drawings uh, package. So you can see the outputs of this script are members, columns, etc. I'm going to take those outputs and plug them into some Kiwi 3D components, which is just a way of building a structural model. And if I preview that, and then if I go and turn off the preview of uh, from the output of the script, you can just see what the structural model looks like. <clears throat> and with Kiwi, it highlights where the connections and the supports are. So you can see the columns, that little circle means it's a pinned connection. And you can see there's a support at the base. So all the walls have got supports at the base. All the columns are connected top and bottom. And all the walls are connected to floor plates. There are those little squares there. So it is a connected model. And I can run that model. Now there's no loads on that at the moment, so I'm going to use another script that we've got here called AutoWind, which is another script we have built. And it just simply takes those outputs of the floors and it creates wind in the different directions. So if I just turn this preview off and preview contents, you can see that as I change the direction of the wind, the colors and the numbers represent how much wind is going into each face. You might have seen this before. And that works with any model, so you can just plug any model into it. So if I leave it at north and I plug that wind load, I enable this load and that's that turns it into a Kiwi input and so I'm going to run that okay that's done I'll turn off the wind preview and you can see that the models run so I'm just gonna enable a deflection mode uh, display to see and this is exaggerated so you can see how it's reacting to wind in that direction that's north remember so if I show the original model you can see how a wind in this direction face on to is trying to push over that building and that's very exaggerated so that looks correct to me. That's what you'd expect. And I can obviously change the wind direction quite easily and get the deflected shape. But that's not particularly useful for this pretty simple residential example. So I'll just unenable that. There's a couple of components here which will help to find out if the bracing works or not. So that's something you want to know in a resi building. Are the braced walls enough for the wind load? So if I enable this one, and I'll just turn off this model again. And this is just doing the, the walls at the floor at the moment. So I won't go into this in a lot of detail, but basically it just quickly visually shows 
which walls are working and which needs to be beefed up. So these aren't real numbers, but it just shows, for example, it might be a bit light on on this bracing here, on this side of the building. Um, if I change the direction, if I put an east wind onto it and run the model again, I can check the walls in the other direction, the east-west direction. It takes a couple of seconds to run it. And if I have, you can see here, if I have an east-west wind, it reckons all the walls are working. So that's just a quick way of doing a bracing check. So you could take back to your to your architect. Um, in the east-west direction, the walls are working, but in the north-south, I think it was some of these in here, might need to be a bit longer or a different arrangement. So the last thing I'm going to demo here is bringing this into Revit to make the structural drawings. So I'll just turn that preview off and that's the beams uh, that are coming out of the component or the script. They go, I'm going to use our adaptive beam script which does timber beam design. So if I turn the, pre the preview on for that, it's gone through and sized up all these members based on their span. It's done a strength check and a deflection check for every member if it were simply supported and it's given us the best design. There are a few outlying cases where you need to use your engineering judgment with this approach. For example here it hasn't quite connected up those lines correctly. I've also got a quick component to make the columns and then I'm simply just going to stream this Oops. into a file which I've already saved on my hard drive and then I'm going to come into Revit. I'm going to start Rhino inside. Then I'm going to load Grasshopper. So in Grasshopper I've got this script that just takes the input that from the file that I just created brings it back into Grasshopper and then this component streams it to Revit. So I'll just enable that and it'll work away for a bit and bring all that framing into Revit. Okay, there it is. Now I've already set up uh, a view at level one. So there we've got level one, if I just annotate that, It's called up every member and given it a size. So in our schedule, you can see what GL1, GL2, etc., what size they are. So if I go to a sheet, and this is just a level one sheet, I've got a framing schedule there and I've called up all my members. So obviously this can be polished up a lot more, put notes and stuff on there, but <clears throat> that's just a really quick um, drawing sheet created. In a couple of clicks really. Now I haven't brought the walls in yet but that just demonstrates the process. The essence of the script is to take some really poor quality or architectural intent geometry in whatever format it is and create some structural information out of it very quickly. So no manual modeling, manual drafting required, or very little. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.